Welcome again to another Curator's Chat. I'm Jason French, Curator of Collections here at the Beringer Crawford Museum. And today we're in our collections facility and I wanted to share with you some beautiful pottery that has just recently came into our possession. And one of the reasons that I wanted to share this pottery with you is that these items were made by two different women that were born here in Covington and became really noted potters and also just artists. The first item is this vase here, which is, if you really look at how it's made, um, it's just a, an amazing vase. It was made by a woman, a young woman named Edith Lynn. And Edith, when she made this, would have been about 29 years old in 1885. Now, Edith was an artist that just, she could do anything. And she was one of the founders of a young woman's um, or young ladies art league here in Covington and that later turned into the Covington Art Club uh, about a decade after it was founded. This piece is one that she produced and it's just when I think about the times that I've tried to do pottery you know you're always concerned about air bubbles and things because when you fire it it can break apart and if you look at just the the how thin the leaves are and all of the, the just the shapes with the the vines and the grapes and how it's all applied to this face I don't know how it didn't explode in the kiln. It's just such an amazing piece of uh, pottery and Edith was such a talented artist. It's just been exciting for us to take in a piece of art that this young woman who uh, was you know certainly a local lady um, created you know and also just in short order we've been able to take in a couple of pieces that are from a slightly more noted um, potter actually a fairly famous potter um, named Mary Shear and Mary was born in Covington was from Covington um, and in the late 19th century, she had a, a, a stint working at Rookwood Pottery. But she ended up, and she's best known for her time at Newcomb Pottery. And that's down in New Orleans. And Newcomb was a pottery school, and she was one of the first hires of, of the Newcomb Pottery. And she was a professor there, and she taught and set the glazes and the patterns that so many students would be learning uh, as this business was both school and um, a retail operation for art pottery in the early 20th century, really is when it, it takes full hold when she was there. And what we have here is um, two examples of her work. And she was known for glazes and really a, a lot of different um, techniques that she had developed in her stint there at Newcomb Pottery. We've got this beautiful little vase here um, that I, looks like it has thistles on it to me um, and it's just just really fine lines and, and the artwork on it is beautiful but then there's also this this plaque um, or, or almost tile piece that is pretty rare for her work. You don't see many of these or or any much of this uh, that's attributed to her from Newcomb Pottery. Certainly this kind of uh, thing with uh, ceramic tiles and, and plaques you see more of uh, from Rookwood Pottery locally, but Newcomb you don't see as much of it from. And I really enjoy this piece. It's just the sheer level of detail, the color, um, and just how the glazes uh, have kind of stayed on in the float in the, in the kiln. It's just a really great piece. Um, and Mary was such a prominent uh, potter and artist uh, at that time. It's just great for us to have her work. October 4th of this year, we're actually, as we have every year, we have a art auction. It's our fresh art auction. And we really specialize in local artists. We encourage people to, like we do, collect local artists so that it can be preserved and you can enjoy it. Um, so if you're interested in kind of getting into art collecting, look, at our, look into our, our art auction. It'll be on our website, bcmuseum.org. You'll get to look at the wonderful art that's coming in this year. Some of it's 
paintings, some of its other types and, and mediums. And we just encourage people to start collecting and learning about their community and enjoying the talents of others that, we're, that are all around us. These are wonderful examples of artists that are no longer with us, but we can still collect just as wonderful examples from artists that are still here today. So if you like these pieces, you want to learn more about them, you know, feel free to drop us a line. We'll, we'll be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, if you like our videos, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next Curator's Chat. Mm -hmm.